Hello everyone, this is Periodic Insanity coming to you for the DIY PC D480-BK build and we're just going to jump right into it with the parts list. As you can see on your screen, this was a dual build with two different cases with almost identical parts. Both cases themselves were reviewed in a video that I call Case Off and you can find a link for that down in the description. In this video, we'll be highlighting the DIY PC build which will include the actual build and then some uh, performance and benchmark numbers and talk at the end of the video. Now fade in the parts list. Okay, now you can see every part in this build is going to be a very highly reviewed and well regarded part. We'll be using the DIY PC case of course. And inside we're going to put a EVGA 750B2, which I chose to give whoever ends up with this PC pretty much any choice of graphics card they want to put in there. Now the PNY SSD that we're throwing in there is for our boot drive. I figure most people already have their own hard drives, or they can get them easily. We got an 8GB stick of G-Skill RAM that's running at 2133, but it's rated to go up to 2400. And then I snagged the good old Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo to cool our Intel Core i5-6500. And then we'll hook all that up to our Gigabyte motherboard, which is a micro ATX board that's running the Intel H170 chipset. For additional information on each component, you can check out the description below. Now let's dive right into the build and I'll see you guys on the other side. Alright, so I hope you all enjoyed the build. Uh, for this last part here, we're going to be throwing in my Gigabyte 7950. This card is not included with the computer, but I wanted to show off how a big graphics card could fit in this case, and also what kind of performance you could expect from about a $120 graphics card. 
as you can see in this case, there's about as much room as you'll ever need for graphics cards. So moving on to some Windows 10 benchmarks. First, for reference's sake, the Deepcool is running an i5-6400 and slightly different memory. In UD Gen Heaven, on high settings, we can see this combo does pretty good, pushing out a minimum of 25 frames per second. Now onto the Metro Last Light Redux benchmark. You can see again, you can play on pretty high settings, almost hitting the magical 60 frames per second number and in the most intensive scenes dipping down to about 25 frames per second. Now over to Tomb Raider 2013, with everything cranked up to the max besides the Tress FX, you can see this game is very well optimized and stays constant at around that 60 frames per second that you'd want. Now we'll take a quick look at some non-graphics benchmarks. I couldn't exactly tell you why there was a difference between the crystal disk marks of each PNY SSD as they're the exact same SSD, but I can tell you that there's pretty much no noticeable real-world difference in the speeds, and these scores could easily have been just an aberration or something running in the background that I didn't notice, and I decided to throw in some Cinebench scores just to see as a point of reference how much processing power these CPUs actually have. Now finally onto some temperatures. You can see that the Deepcool build on the bottom won the Temperature War, however, this DIY build posted very respectable numbers that are at least average or above average even. And that's all for the build guys. If this build hasn't sold yet, there's a link in the description. And I'll see you all next time on my next PC build.